there. My name is Dr. Doe Buckley. For those of you who don't know me, uh, and it is my absolute pleasure to welcome you to this, uh, I guess, online COVID edition of uh, Research Methods and Statistics One. So in this video, I'm just going to introduce myself. Um, those of you who know me are aware that I love talking about myself. It's my favorite uh, pastime. Um, like I said, my name is uh, Doe Buckley. And yes, it's Doe like a deer, D-O-E. Um, so you are free to call me Dr. Buckley, Dr. Doe, or just by my first name if you would prefer. I'm not one of those people who is super picky about uh, titles or anything like that. Um, so again, welcome. Um, so let's see, what interesting things can I tell you about myself? Uh, well, I have been teaching uh, undergraduate psychology courses for about 10 years, and uh, six of those years have been spent at Mercer. So I absolutely love Mercer. I love um, the beautiful campus. And I love how compassionate and community and civic minded um, Mercer students are. I love how curious they are. Um, I love how active they are um, in very important pursuits um, like community engagement and um, political engagement and um, all kinds of things. So I really, really appreciate um, the, the compassion that you guys show and the interest that you show in um, important world matters. Um, I've been so impressed for my entire uh, uh, career so far at Mercer in the caliber of students that we have. Um, and I genuinely enjoy um, getting to know each and every one of you. Um, so prior to coming to Mercer, I did my graduate work uh, in cognitive psychology uh, at UCLA in Southern California. Um, and prior to graduate school, I went to a very small liberal arts college exclusively for women called Sweetbriar College. Um, and that was in Lynchburg, Virginia. Uh, and prior to that, I grew up in Yorktown, Virginia, which is just on the coast of Virginia. Um, and I also spent quite a bit of time as a child in San Diego, California. So those are kind of uh, my stomping grounds, if you if you like. Um, and yeah, um, most of my family is military, so um, we're, we were a Navy family, and many of my relatives are still uh, in that service today. Um, so that's kind of my background. Um, Again, so my uh, training was in uh, cognitive psychology, which is basically um, psychological scientists who study the mind. Uh, and my particular interest is in uh, optimizing learning and memory. So what sort of strategies can both uh, students and instructors use to uh, optimize learning or to make uh, learning more effective and more efficient. Um, I've also focused on uh, how forgetting can be adaptive. Um, so most people assume because I study memory um, that I look into like amnesia or uh, Alzheimer's, but I actually look at kind of the natural lapses in memory that we all experience. Um, and my work has shown that that can actually be helpful. So forgetting some stuff, provided it's not really relevant to you anymore, um, can actually make it easier for you to remember things uh, that are relevant. All right. Um, so that's kind of my, my background. Um, I've taught a lot of different courses at Mercer. I've taught uh, intro. I've taught, of course, my core course, which is cognitive. Um, I've taught many, many sections of uh, Research Methods and Statistics 1, which is this course. Um, I've also taught History and Systems and INT 101 um, in an Introduction to Disability Studies course. Um, and I have a lot of experience 
teaching online as well. So I've taught both cognitive and sports psychology online in the summer. Um, so you, as hopefully you saw in my email and the announcements that you've received, um, because of my status as a uh, disabled person and, and some pretty significant health complications that I have, um, it's not currently safe for me to teach face-to-face. Uh, -face. Um, so I will be teaching all of my courses online this summer. Um, but as I assured you, um, I do have a lot of experience and I'm certainly willing to and excited to learn along with you as we go on this um, unexpected journey together. All right, so the more interesting stuff that you guys uh, might be interested in um, is growing up before I even conceived of the idea of um, being in academia or being a professor or studying psychology, um, I really wanted to be a country music singer. Um, so from the time I was like six years old all the way up through high school, I really, really wanted to be a country music singer. Um, and this was before the days of, you know, Taylor Swift and uh, Luke, Brian and all those people. Um, so I predominantly listen to like Faith Hill and Garth Brooks and uh, those kinds of folks who are, you know, maybe not as, uh, you guys might not be as familiar with them. Um, so I was very excited about that and I attempted to learn uh, three different instruments. So I attempted to learn guitar and mandolin and a really cool instrument called the mountain dulcimer. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. It's a bluegrass kind of Appalachian instrument. Uh, and I also took voice lessons for many, many years. Um, but the interesting part of this uh, factoid, if you will, um, is that it was really, really awful. Like it was almost impressive how bad I was at all four of those things, um, and yet I persisted. And, and for much of my life, I genuinely believed that I would be doing those things, right? Um, so why on earth do I share this kind of embarrassing uh, story about myself or fact about myself with my students? Um, well, one of the reasons that I do is because I know that a lot of you come into college um, thinking that you know exactly what you want to do, right? So some of you might want to major in engineering or, or um, look into uh, going to medical school or look into becoming uh, the next, the owner of the next, you know, Fortune 500 company. Um, and I know that a, a lot of you end up doing those things, right? We have some really impressive students at Mercer. Um, but sometimes your plans can change a little bit, right? Sometimes once you've taken enough classes, you realize that maybe who you thought were, you were going to be isn't, isn't quite where you end up. Um, so I just want to share with you that, that my path in life um, and my eventual um, realization of this career um, was not my intention at first. Um, and that's okay, right? Um, we all have individual talents that we can uh, nurture and um, kind of we're all on a sort of a journey to find out who we are. Um, and that's particularly the case in college. Um, so if you find out that's the case with you, um, consider it just a normal part of life that you can embrace and not something, not something to be ashamed of, right? Okay, the next interesting, well, interesting to me anyway, uh, factoid um, is that I'm pretty obsessed with uh, 90s sitcoms, and my favorite by far is Seinfeld, if you've ever watched, or your parents more likely have ever watched uh, Seinfeld, um, and I have watched them so many times over the past 25 years or so that I can now quote every single episode from memory. 
end. And what's particularly striking about that is I would say as a cognitive psychologist that it's not enough to just expose yourself to information. You have to actually do something with it, right? So you have to study it kind of actively and, and you know, do different techniques to make it stick. Um, but in my case, all I had to watch them, all I had to do was watch them repeatedly for many, many years. Um, and now they are permanently sealed in my long-term memory. So obviously that was time well spent, right? Um, so the last little factoid is just, I know that um, you probably hear this a lot and it's almost cliche, um, but I really do love to teach, right? Whether I'm teaching on campus or I'm teaching uh, from my house in my living room, um, I'm really, really invested in teaching and it really means a lot to me. Um, and I always, always hope and really strive for every single student in my class to have a wonderful experience. Um, and like I said, we're on this journey together. We'll learn from each other, we'll adapt. Um, and I'm very, very excited that you're here. All right, so uh, my last slide uh, is a slide that I made featuring my dog, Marley. Um, so why on earth would I show you a slide with a bunch of pictures of my dog? Well, truth be told, um, she's very needy and will likely show up in um, some of my videos, wanting me to pet her, wanting to jump on my lap, wanting to walk on my keyboard, whatever. Um, so I figured because it's inevitable, I might as well introduce her. Uh, so my dog, Marley, I got her when I was in graduate school uh, in 2014, and she is a Maltese poodle. And I actually trained her to be a service dog. Um, so because of the uh, kind of acute respiratory um, issues that I have, uh, she was trained, I trained her to um, either retrieve my medication and bring them to me, or she jumps on my lap, um, sits on my chest, and I can access uh, medications that she has clipped to her. Um, she's actually retired now, so she's not a working dog anymore, um, but she still has retained all of her special skills, so to speak. Um, and because I was in graduate school when I got Marley, I decided that she also needed to get her PhD. Uh, so she has her doctorate in canine psychology and her research interests include cuddling, sniffing, scratching, chasing squirrels, and constantly demanding my attention slash affection, right? So I'm sure you guys will see her in various videos and she is also looking forward to meeting you. All right, um, so this concludes my first welcome video. Like I said, I'm so happy that you're here um, and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful experience in this course and I hope you have a terrific first week of classes.